week that he was thinking about taking a church. We're going to pray about it. I said, okay. So that Wednesday, my mother had a massive stroke. Of course, they put her on life support. And uh, so then on Friday, my grandbaby was born. Then on Saturday, we took my, uh, my mother off of life support. And then on Sunday, we went to the, where well, we were supposed to go to the new church. Of course, I was grieving, so I didn't go. But uh, I challenge any of you to beat that weekend. So that was kind of a whirlwind meet weekend. But anyway, I want to tell you a little bit about Steve. Um, one thing I can tell you about Steve is that whatever he does, he puts 100% into it. And whatever he asks you to do, he's either done it or he would be willing to do it. Uh, at the church, you can ask any of them. If he asks you to come early and pray for an hour, you know who's going to be the first one at the church praying for that hour? You're going to come and find Brother Steve there. If he's not there, you know something's wrong. If he asks you to uh, skip three meals that week for fasting, Brother Hall is going to set the example. He's going to be, he's going to be fasting. If he asks you to read the Bible from front to cover in one year, Brother Hall is going to probably read it through two or three times. And he already knows the scripture, but yet he's going to reread it. If Brother Hall asks you to come and work at the church, Brother Hall is going to be there working with you. That's, that's the kind of man that my husband is. And I'm very proud of him. And he puts up with me. So uh, that's a plus right there. So, uh, But uh, he, he is an awesome man of God. He loves God. He loves his family. And he loves his church. And he loves this radio station. And our prayer is that it will continue to go out over the airwaves and reach the millions of people that it has been prophesied that it would do. So we ask that you please support the radio station. And now at this time, for all of you that listen to Steve on the radio station, I present to you my husband, Steve Hall. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I am Pastor Steve Hall, ordained bishop in the Church of God. But you know, the main thing that you should know about me is I'm his. He's mine. It's all that really matters, isn't it? It's not the title. It's not how long I've been his. It's not about how many scriptures I know. It's not any of the miracles I've seen. It's not the people we've prayed through. No, it's none of that. It's I know him. And he knows me. I call him father. He calls me son. Oh, glory to God. And there's no big eyes and little U's in this house. Because God doesn't pick favorites. Amen. He shows no favoritism to anybody. He loves us all equally and the same. Even though our positions in his body are all different. Yes, some are the mouthpiece. And that's the, the part where I would step up to be. Some of us are the toes. And they keep the church working and moving forward. And some of us are the hands. And they, they're working, doing various jobs. And some are in the office. And they're doing the paperwork. But we're all part of the body. And that's the main thing. Is that you know who you are in Jesus Christ. You know what your job is in the kingdom of God. Amen. Glory to God. Won't you stand with me for a word of prayer? Father, tonight in the name of Jesus, I humble myself before you. I am your servant. I am a messenger. Lord, I come to bring the message that you have graciously given to me. To feed your flock, Lord. Strong meat, Lord Jesus. Nourishment, Lord, for their spiritual life. And I humble myself before you that the words of my mouth would be true. God, I put on the belt of truth right now that every word that I would speak would be true and would stand on judgment day. And God, on that day that we should be able to reach back into this time frame right here where we meet together in this very hour. And remember that the word of God appeared to us on this, name, on this night. His name was Jesus. He illuminated his word so that we would know the way, the truth, and the life. Yes, O oh Lord, let your Holy Spirit lead us and guide us. What I say and what they hear, Lord, let them be true and let them bear fruit. Let WUCC bear fruit, Lord, in your kingdom. God, let many people come and help bear the heavy load to take this station into the furthest reaches of the world. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for all of those who are laboring in the harvest field with us. And we want to thank you for the many souls, even souls that are here tonight. And souls that are listening over the radio right now, Lord, that's been blessed by this station. For God, we didn't raise this up alone. You were there with strength and courage. You were there to supply every need. And I give you the glory and the honor, all of it, Lord, because you alone are worthy. You have moved mountains that mere Pastor Schaefer, neither one could have hoped to move. 
move. But you have done it with the moving of your power and spirit. We know that, oh God, that they labor in vain who labor to build the house unless you're there building the house. Thank you for this house, Lord. Now move in this house. In Jesus' name, we all pray and say amen. amen. And you may be seated in the house of the Lord. If you have your Bible with me and you will turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. I want to go to verse 1 through 5. I know you love Jesus, amen? You're ready to go to heaven tonight? You don't have a promise of tomorrow. You don't have a promise of the next five minutes. Jesus could come. But if the Lord tarries here for the next three or four hours, I'd like to preach for you. Yeah, I didn't get a lot of them, but if, I, if the Lord tarries for a little while, maybe not two or three hours, I'd like to preach for you. Now, Paul preached all night until a boy fell out of the upper room asleep. He didn't fell asleep sitting in a window trying to get a little breeze, fell down and was dead. If any of y'all fall out dead, I'm going to raise you up just like Paul did. No different. If I see some of you that went to sleep so hard, we thank you dead. I'm going to embarrass you when you wake up. I'm going to tell you that an awful lot. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. You know, we have a program in Brother RPI over here to my left. I asked him to do my, my armor bearer for me. And it says, in the last days, in verse 1. That's the name of our program. It's a good program. Every Tuesday night from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock, listen in on WCC 99.9. But this know, it says, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Can I get Amen. Unthankful and unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. The most amazing thing is in verse 5, it says, having a form of godliness... These are church-going rascals. These are church-going snakes in the grass. These are hypocrites. These are those that are among us, the Bible says. They are spots and wrinkles in our love feast. Amen. They are the sand in the wheels of the machinery of God. And they are here and they are real inside of what God is doing. Now, I don't mind going to church with a bunch of hypocrites and liars and boasters and blasphemers and unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, and slanderers without any self-control. I don't mind going to church with them. Amen. Because such as some of, some, as I, some of us, and we found Jesus when we went to church. I don't mind them. They're welcomed in the house. But I'm not going to compromise the gospel of Jesus Christ to make them feel like they're at home yet. Because as long as they're living that lifestyle, they're not ready yet. So tonight, we want to talk about the influence of evil. How many of you know the world that you live in is filled with this influence? Like no generation ever before. Listen, when Paul wrote this, he wrote it to the people in his day. But it sounds like it's the epitaph on the tombstone of our generation. It fits us to the T. But they didn't even have all the things that we have today to bring the influence of evil right in your bedroom. I mean, in the privacy of your own home, the influence of evil has penetrated every crack and every crevice. You know, when you go to kill roaches, you got to put the poison in every little crack and every little crevice. So when they're hiding and scooching through the dark, they run over some of that and maybe eat a little some of that. And some of them will just die because they're trying to hide. I'm telling you today, they're not hiding. They then come out of the crevices and they've come out of the closets. And the influence of evil is following us everywhere. So point number one tonight I want to talk to you about under the influence of evil in our generation. Is that whatever has your time has your mind. Whatever has your time has your mind. There are endless opportunities in the, in the uh, world in which we, we live right now to sin and nobody know it. Nobody knows what you're doing when you're home. Nobody knows what you're doing on the computer at work. Nobody knows. You got the privacy bar on your, on your Google. You got the privacy bar on your phone. You can get by with a lot of things, and you can act like you're not doing any of those things. But I tell you, 
God watches and God knows. But there's endless opportunities to sin. The influence of evil is growing because there are portals that's never been for any other generation than ours. They didn't have what we have to bring the evil to every corner of our life like we have today. Never has there been a generation like this. And that's why he said, know that in the last days it was going to grow worse and worse. Evil doers were going to wax worse and worse because they can hide it. They can get away with it. Portals have opened up everywhere. Wicked imagination of all mankind has been materialized. I mean, what they could just imagine 50 years ago, we have surpassed today in iniquity. You know the problem that they're having in government today? Oh, it's not balancing the budget. It's keeping the pedophiles out of the offices. The problem that they're having in the organized world today is, is get, getting the porn of the politicians off of the internet hiding the deeds that they are done and they're supposed to be representing a country in whose letterheads one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all when they are living in sin in bondage and in deception they're trying to bring liberty and freedom to a people that are still in bondage and the, and the people that could be set free by the gospel of Jesus Christ they're trying to silence the voice of the church Something's wrong in our generation. The influence of evil is like a rising tide. It seems it cannot be stopped. The number one culprit, the number one avenue that Satan is pumping his poison in every home is your TV. Now I want you to buckle up because some of you are going to be hit hard and you're going to need to accept this message. Because God wants you to see. He wants the blinders to come off of our eyes tonight. Many of our listening audience out there in radio land. You're going to listen tonight. I want you to hear what God has to say. Because we have been so customized. We, we, we've been so brainwashed. We've been so broke down. That we don't even see what is right before us. What is right before us. Every day when you get off of work is that television. What is right before you every morning when you wake up is that television. Or a radio or something that is leading your brain and your attitude the wrong way. You see that TV brings images. It brings sounds and it, it stirs up our emotion. And the worst thing about the TV that nobody's ever had before us few, uh, at least about 100 years ago. Is that they could bring this most vile thing. Uh, it's worse than an idol. You hear me? It's worse than an idol of Buddha. It's worse than an idol that you have built out of wood or stone and placed in your house and you fall down to worship. Because this one's got all kinds of options. If you don't like worshiping at this altar, change the channel. There's another altar. You don't like this altar. You don't like this person. You don't like this actor. You can change it. And here's another one being offered to you. And it's coming to the most sacred place, which is our homes. Thankfully, it's not on most churches on every wall, but in our homes and in our bedrooms, we have this filth being pumped in from a demonized world. Right in our homes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit this hard and then I'm going to try to go on from this. You know, all you have to do to open a portal to hell is push the red button right there on your remote. And a portal, let's call it a television. Do you, have you ever thought what it's telling you? It really is telling you what it is. It's telling you a vision. Tell a vision. Whose vision is it telling? Is it telling God's vision for your future? Is it telling you God's plan to save, sanctify, and fill you and separate you so you can make heaven your home? Or is there another vision? Is there another storyline? Is there another baseline that they're coming up from? I'm telling you, you already know the answer. You already know it comes to pollute your mind it comes to dilute your faith it comes to tear you down until you are nothing but shredded meat for demons to come and devour amen push the red button if you want to but a portal is going to open in your home click on that website if you want to but there are demons waiting to make the connection with your eyes and with your heart and they're coming to infest your life you can't play with this deadly poison and think you're going to be all right. It's a sad world that we live in. 
The portals open up. Things come through the portals. We invite blasphemers in our living room. I know you Christians, you don't, you would not open the door to a man that's cussing like a sailor and say, come on in, sit in my chair and talk to my children. No way would you. You, you would not allow a murderer, a condemned murderer, you know he's a murderer, knock on your door and say, come on in, I want you to sit in my living room. I want you to teach my children how to shoot, stab, thieve, steal, rape. Come on in, all you drug dealers. You Come on in, bring your drugs. It, br come on, addicts. Come on, adulterers. Come on, you witches. More witches on TV now than ever been. I'm not talking about the ones that fly around on broomsticks. I'm talking about the one that casts spells. I'm talking about they conjure up demons. Come on. It's all on your TV. And when you let that TV, that portal open in your house, you just invited them in your house. See, you, some of us are so desensitized to it that we say, Pastor, you've gone too far. No, I'm trying to show you what we're doing. We've been brainwashed to think this is all normal. This is all okay. My friend, there's worse things on that TV than there was when they had the orgies in Rome in, in Diana's temple. It's worse than the Sodomites when you were in Sodom. It was destroyed. It's worse than Noah's day. And Noah's day, only eight people were saved. But that generation was wicked and desperately violent. And you let it in your bedroom. At least Noah could shut the door and keep it out. And we look at it as Christians and we say, this is okay. It's not me doing it. But you're being entertained by people that are. What does that say about your choice? What kind of person are you to let the blasphemers, the adulterers, what kind of family, what kind of wife and husband sit down in front of a TV and watch them on TV go commit adultery on their spouse? What kind of father brings them in and lets nudity be paraded in the living room right before their children's eyes? You let a man or a woman try to come up in your house naked. You're going to do something about it. Call the law, shoot them. You're going to do something. But you'll cut the TV on and there they are. And you welcome them in. You'll, 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 re hey, you'll hit the record button. I'm not saying you are. I'm saying somebody will. Hit the record button so you can see it again. That's the influence of evil in this generation. And we swallow it hook, line, and sinker. Christians have been desensitized to it. We'll let them bless themselves, lift themselves, and then curse God right in our own living room. And so, oh, I hope we don't say that again. You know, it's going to be all right this time. Y'all getting where I'm, you, you see this? Is your eyes being open? Do you feel the Holy Spirit telling you you're hearing the words of truth and you need to get the trash out of your house? Which is vampires and werewolves, zombies, demons on parade in your living room. You want to see a parade? Let me come to your house. Let Jesus come to your house and see if he can go through the channels and hit your history button and watch what you was watching. You can't welcome him in and he, him be comfortable watching. You don't need to watch it. Man, yeah, pastor, you just going, yeah, right. Whosoever looketh upon a woman or a man to lust after them has already committed adultery. In their hearts. It's just a TV. It works through the TV too. You talk to lie. You talk to blaspheme. You talk to kill. You talk to rape. You talk to do, do drugs. You learn how to cast incantations. And use sorcery. And it's prayed in your living room. And you accept it. What's wrong with us? Do you know why there's not a move of God in the world today? Number one reason is Television. Let me tell you, right over here in the room, right next door to my left, there was a man trying to go through deliverance. Couldn't get the answer. With RPI, we, there, things were there, but they wouldn't come out. What's the problem? So I'm talking to him. I'm, I'm helping another fellow men, uh, deliverer, men, delivering ministry in there, and I'm going to try and help figure out what's the key. Because I know there's a key. There's a big old key right over there under my brother RPI. There's a big key that's missing. And I says, what kind of TV do you watch? 
And he says, well, I've got this shows, you know, I've got some channels that I pay for the subscription to come into my house. And I say, what kind of channels do you get? Well, every once in a while, the, uh, the H we have an HBO. We got some of those vile things. And, and I just flip through there. And sometimes it catches my attention. And I said, will you cancel the subscription to the poison that you're paying to be brought into your home? Do you understand? Will you cancel the subscription? You are paying the demons to come and entertain you with porn. And you come here having still the subscription going on. And you want to be delivered from something you're paying to have in your life. It won't work that way, friend. Got him to renounce. Renounce it. He said, my wife is going to be so upset. She, he said, I better go talk to her first. Y'all understand? Got to go talk to the wife who's in another room going through deliverance. Asking her, is it okay if we shut down the subscription to the trash that comes in our house and brings us to a point that our marriages is about to fall apart and we're filled with bitterness and anxieties and our children are out of control. And now you're going to go ask somebody if you can stop the fear. What's wrong with this world? Come on, son. What's the wrong with this world? It's the influence of evil. It's everywhere. We've accepted it. We've befriended it. We've excused it. We, we tolerate it. We celebrate it. Some of you got some favorite actors. Don't say no words. Don't say no names. Don't condone. Don't because don't, you. I might hit one of them in a minute. You want to be condemned. You like that one because she's sexy. You like that one because he's strong and masculine. You like this one. You like, you like this one because the way they act and the way, what, well, who do they represent? Do they represent God's kingdom of light, love, and liberty and power? Or do they represent the dark side where all the portals of hell are being opened from? Whose spokesmen are they? Whose children are they? Oh, I'm getting there. Children exposed. Friends are invited to watch the parade of iniquity walking through your living room. Come on over. I got a movie. We'll watch it together. And you won't even invite them to church. I'm not talking about y'all. Somebody else want it. They come on. The children's what gets me the most. Hell is vomiting up. It's very best to fulfill your fantasies. Hell is vomiting up its very best right, on your, right in your living room, right on your floor to fulfill your fantasies. Right. Only if in your mind. Somebody says, it's only in my mind, Pastor. It's only in. What did I say? The first thing I said. Whatever controls your time controls your mind. Tell me it ain't on your mind. Tell me you don't have images burned into your, into your brain. Imaginations. Run wild. Tell, tell me thoughts don't come into your mind when you see them on the TV. And we say we put up the shield of faith to stop all the fiery darts of the wicked. And when you're watching that trash, you don't have up the shield of faith. You're letting the wicked demon spirits throw every fiery dart they can. And since you don't have the faith up, you're getting hit by every one of them. And they're taking a root in your life. And you take that root of iniquity to your bedroom. You take that root of iniquity to your job site. You take that iniquity everywhere you go until you cast it out. Until you get it cleaned up. I'm talking about the influence of evil in our generation. You give the keys of the kingdom. The keys of the nursery. To demons. And then complain when the children misbehave. You pay the pimps. I'll say it again. You pay the pimps. They bring you cable and satellite. So you can watch it all. But it's at a price. That's a pimp, isn't it? Producing for you something that you fleshly desire so fulfillment comes to you and you pay a little bit for it and they, you, you pay them. They're pimps of poison from the pit of hell and you're paying them to bring it. Y'all know y'all was ready for this, huh? All of it. Movie theaters. Pimping the world's goods. How about this? If you don't. If you don't go to the theater to get it, you go buy you a portal, your own personal portal. It's called a TV. You'll get your own personal portal for your room so you can watch things that the kids ain't supposed to see. Because of the cussing, because of the nudity, you, you get one personally. 
And then you, I'm going to get better in a minute, y'all. I just got to get this out of my system. I'm, t- I'm trying to show you how influenced we are. How much we've let down our guard. How much we've sacrificed our children on this altar of compromise. How much our blindness as Christians has crept in until it's poisoned our own families. And they don't know the gospel, but they know every mover star. They know every basketball player. They know every race car driver. They know every football game. They can quote you the stats, and they can, but they can't tell you what the pastor preached on last Sunday. There is something wrong. The influence of evil has grown too great in this country. And it's time for the soldiers of God to one more time put on the armor of God and do something about the wickedness in this world. Let me tell you something about those portals that you turn on. And off with the red button. Every time you open that portal, you're inviting new friends into your house. You're inviting them. You open the door. It's like opening the door. Cutting the TV on is like opening the door. It is a portal. It's a way in. You can shut it. You can open it. When you willfully open the door, things come in your house. Your new friends are still in the house when you cut the TV off. Is that right, brother? I said your new friends that you invited when you opened up the portal to the abyss. And you watched and you welcomed and you laughed at their filthy, vile jokes. And you were entertained by their adulteries. And you were amused by their murders. And you wondered about how is this woman going to get out of this trouble. And and how is this all going to work out. And you got so involved. You got sucked in. But I'm telling you. You not only got sucked in. But they got sucked in too. They got sucked right into your life. And now your new friends are not going anywhere. Because you cut the TV off. That doesn't get rid of all the things you welcomed in. You welcome demonic entities into your life. Well, you're not going to hear this on many churches on Sunday morning, are you? Is it true? Is it true? You need to hear it then. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. They're in bondage because preachers won't preach it. They're in bondage because they think they're going to run off half their tithe paying membership if they get bold and courageous in the name of Jesus. But I want you to know until you start getting bold and courageous, you're not going to bring the miracles back in your house. Until you get bold and courageous, your kids are going to be the ones on drugs. Until you get bold and courageous and you begin to put the devil under your feet, which is his proper place. I'm telling you, your family's going to keep falling apart. Your marriage is going to the pit. Amen. I'm telling you, unless you take a stand with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords against this influence of evil, it's going to run you over like a steamship. Hosea 4 and 6 says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Ignorance. But you won't leave here ignorant about your television. You won't leave here ignorant about that portal. And you won't leave here ignorant with the knowledge of what it's done to your own life and family. And how much time it has stole. If you could recover just the time you've given to watching worthless programs, you could have enough money to build you a house by the time you're 30. That's that much. It's that much wasted time. As a pastor, sometimes I say, been reading your Bible? Well, pastor, you know I'm tired. Next question I need to ask him sometimes. I may, I may not. I probably don't. I don't want to offend them sometimes. You know what it should be? How much TV you watch when you get home? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Knowledge come through diligent studies and application of your mind and your will to absorb something that you don't yet understand. That's how you get it. The TV nulls that. It dumbs down that. It it just takes and steals all initiative to learn, to engage yourself. Literacy in America is on the rise. Scores are coming down. Iniquity is going up. You can buy. There's people who will spend more money. To get the cable and the satellite and the phone and the TV. Then they will to give their kids the proper supplies to go to school with. I'm telling you what I know because communities and schools and classes ask for help to buy supply. And our our church is doing it. Our church does it for Johnston. We help supply them. We bought 
over $100 just the other day. School supplies. But, something's, but some, somehow the parents are being robbed. Some stealing their money. Some stealing their time. Some stealing their concern. All right. Y'all ready for some more? All right. Here's the next problem, right? Now, with the same thing drenched in our mind every day, right before you come to church, you cut the TV off. Honey, did you cut the TV off? Oh, I forgot to cut the TV off. It's Sunday morning. What you watching the TV for on Sunday morning? Maybe you got a religious broadcast. That's good. Maybe you wanted to catch up on the latest gossip from the movie stars. That's bad. So you got to cut the TV off right before you go to church. But you're going to cut it right back on the time you get back. And you already hit the record button so you don't miss your show. But here, here's, let's just follow this just a little bit further and I'm going to change gears. Now, here we go. Now you're coming in the church and you're wanting this is what you want. This is what I want. A holy God to fill our unclean, demonized vessels with the Holy Ghost and power. We come in his house. We've watched the filth of the world. We've ate at the devil's table. We've drunk the poison of the world. And we come in God's house and we lift up our hands and we say, oh, Lord, send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now and baptize everyone. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost will not dwell in an unclean temple. Until you let that filth in, the Holy Ghost is going to say goodbye. Because the Holy Ghost is the one that's convicting you. Convincing you of the truth of this message. And if you will not apply the truth, the spirit of truth will vacate the premises. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17. Here's the remedy. Here's what we got to do. Here's what the church has got to do if we want to see a move of God in the last days. And I'm telling you, we're living in the last of the last days. Listen, it is the last few minutes of the game. And the game can be won or lost by this generation. This generation. It's been 2,000 years of preaching the gospel. But this is a generation that will see the fulfillment and the culmination of the plan of God for all humanity. We are the last players. And we've got to win the game. We've got to finish the fight we've got to complete the race we've got to put the crown of righteousness on our head and take off the cloak of iniquity in jesus name second corinthians chapter 6 verse 17 says come out from among them and separate yourselves from them says the lord touch not their filthy things i don't know what the translation up here says but touch not the unclean thing this translation said touch not the filthy thing then i will receive you Brother, I need to give you something. Come here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Excuse me. I was being choked off a little bit. I'm ready to go full throttle right now. Filthy things. Come out from among them. Listen. Come out from among them. Separate yourselves from them, says the Lord. It ain't me. This ain't me telling you to get the trash out of your house. This is God saying, come out from among them. You let them in your house, in your living room, in your bedroom, and you let your kids watch it too. Come on. You kids, you need to support your mom and daddy when they're trying to get the pollution out of your mind and out of your heart. You need to say, Mama, thank you. Daddy, thank you. I know you love me now because you stopped feeding me the poison that the world's been pumping in my veins for years. So you... Understand the Lord is saying this and don't touch the filthy things, the unclean things like the remote. <laughs> then I will receive you. What does it say? Then I will receive you. When is he going to receive you into his presence? When is he going to let you? Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul to vanity. He shall receive a reward from the Lord his God. Oh, my Lord, I'm preaching to somebody tonight. You can't come in here and lift up unholy hands, defiled hands, a defiled heart, a filthy mouth. You don't praise God with the same mouth you just blasphemed your brothers with. I don't think so. Hey, Jesus, help me. Isolated from reality if you think you're unaffected by the influence of evil around you. You think you've... It's just skimmed right by me. I was right here. It just went there. It just went there. They didn't even see me. The little demon didn't even see me. He just ran by. You're isolated from reality. You have put yourself in a place 
You don't even know what's going on around you. And you think where you're at is where you're supposed to be. What you're doing is okay. And the whole time, demons are laughing at you. They're laughing. You want to draw close to God so you try to pray, but praying don't work. You try to find time to read your Bible and the Bible reading don't work. You go to the pastor and say, Pastor, I'm doing everything I know to do. Why is it not working? It's because you've isolated yourself from reality. You're getting all your information from a demonized world. You're getting all your information from the TV. You're getting all your information from, from The View, that TV program called The View. I don't watch it either. You're getting all your, pro, your, your, your mind input from, from Oprah. Yeah, help us, Lord. Amen. You isolated yourself from reality. And now you have this feeling that it doesn't really bother me. I still feel good when I go to church. At least you feel something when you go to church. But you still have to come out of this stuff. And you still have to get this stuff to come out of you. We need to wake up and deliver ourselves, listen, from the hands of spiritual delusions. We need to wake up and deliver ourselves from the hands of spiritual delusion. It's got a grip on us. The spiritual delusion is derived from demonic doctrines. And when you think you're untouchable, when you think you're okay and you're participating in the events of evil, you're not okay. You're deceived. they are delusions from demonic doctrines. In the last days, people would give heed to doctrines of demons having a form of godliness but denying the power. I'm talking about church people who think their name is on the roll, but it's on the wrong roll. They think they're all right, but they're living in sewage of the, of the sins of this life. I'll never forget, we was... We was in a revival. I was pastoring the Lexington Church of God. We got a prayer line going to pray for people that are sick. Lady comes up, and you know what she asked us? She said, will you pray for me that I can divorce my husband so I can marry my boyfriend? Me and the advantage just kind of looked at each other, and I'm thinking, what you going to say? That's a true story. What happened, somebody said? We didn't pray for them to get a divorce. Amen. It's the mindset, it's delusions that are in the churches today. Delusions that God is going to grow. This church is going to be a powerhouse when every day we put our minds and our hearts in the sewage. And then we try to shake it off like Samson did because he done laid his head in Delilah's lap. He's done fornicated with the Philistines. And now he wants to go out and do battle and kill his enemies. Well, that worked for a while, didn't it? But there came a day when he shook himself and the enemy had shaved that old head of his. And he didn't have the strength to fight off the enemies anymore. You're going to wake up one day and what you had is all going to be gone your marriage is going to be gone your children's going to be gone and you're going to come to me go to some other pastor i don't know what happened well now you do honey before it happens you isolated from reality you got to wake up you got to wake up and deliver yourself the bible talks about self-deliverance the bible talks about that the lord is our deliverer but it talks about we free ourselves by the knowledge of the truth It talks about you shall know the truth. The truth shall set you free. It talks about that we cleanse ourselves from all the filthiness and the flesh perfecting holiness in the sight of God. I'm talking about purifying myself. If I watch it myself, I can stop myself from watching it. If I paid for it, I can cut off the subscription. Amen. I can do the things that separate me unto God so that I will be received once again. Touch not the unclean thing. What we need is a dose of truth right out of the Bible. The truth is everybody needs deliverance from diabolical propaganda. You need to look up some of the words like diabolical and propaganda. Just look up the dictionary words and it's amazing what they say. You need to look up the word isolation and reality. You'll be surprised at what these words say in the, I'm not talking about a Bible dictionary. I'm talking about regular old Webster's dictionary. These words have power. They have meaning. The demons don't want me to preach this under the anointing of the Holy Spirit because they know the words of God is sharp. Amen. And cutting asunder the bone and the marrow. Cutting asunder the spirit and the soul. Dividing the thoughts and intents. The devils don't like me preaching this because somebody out there might get the clue. And somebody might cut off the TV. And somebody might start praying in other tongues. And somebody might get delivered. And somebody might come a world evangelistic powerhouse and begin to swarm the world with the storm of God's power. And break down every yoke, every heavy burden. My God, raise up our 
sons and daughters uh, until they shake the gates of hell and, and I'm telling you railroad every demon out of town we need to be delivered from diabolical propaganda pastors need to be delivered evangelists need to be delivered the singers need to be delivered Sunday school teachers need to be delivered bought into this lie eating at Satan's table Deacons need to be delivered. Bishops need to be delivered. Prophets need to be delivered. Apostles need to be delivered. It starts in the leadership of the house. Hey. Talked to a man that installed cable years ago. He said, Pastor, you'd be surprised at the pastors I go in their houses and their all upset because HBO won't play anymore. Their Playboy subscription stopped playing. They want to know how to get it back up and running. He says, they're pastors. I, I see their, their stuff laying around. And you want to know why God's not moving in America. You got to get the trash out. I'm not saying it's here. I'm, I'm talking about a very broad stroke here. But we need to be delivered. Some of you need to be delivered. Jesus has come to deliver us all. I tell you we're all the same. There's no big eyes and little U's. I'm not above any trial or test or temptation that you are. I'm just like you. Jesus, when he came, was in every way tempted as we are yet without sin. If he was there, I'm there. Everybody's there. And any and all of us are subject to failure. But you're going to fail. You're going to fail if you keep eating at the devil's table. There's no, there's no alternative. You're going to fail. To stumble and fall and get back up, not a problem. To continue in your delusion when the truth has been presented to you means you agree with the doctrines of the demons and you made your choice and you'll make your bed with the demons in hell. Everybody needs to be delivered. Jesus is the only one that can deliver. You and Jesus, get your wills together and clean the house. It's Jesus' will that you be free. Amen. He wants you to clean that house. He's going to help you clean that house. He wants you to deliver you from unforgiveness. A lot of people in church have unforgiveness against somebody. There's a lot of people who leave the church hurt. Most of the time it's just a demon. A demon's lied to them. The demon has convinced them that something bad has happened in the church and it ain't even happened. That somebody said something and they ain't even said it. It's a diabolical lie from the demonic world and because they're so weakened by the things they listen to and the things they watch and the things they let into their lives, the demons can control their thought life and they get them to go out and slander the pastor and the church and everything else. It's happening all the time. There's more church splits over lies than there are truths. Somebody's listening to the wrong voice. Unforgiveness comes in the house of God. Lust. Lust has filled this society. Lust is the plague of our generation. Lust is a thing that's destroying more homes, more children, more parents. It is killing. There's 800,000 kids a year in America that go missing. Did you hear the number? There's 800,000 kids in America every year that go missing and they're unaccounted for and they're not claimed or found. Some of them may be runaways, but a lot of them are brought into the sex trade. Everybody needs to be. Delivered unforgiveness and lust anger is part of the problems of our generation hate and fear Pride a lot of people got so much pride. They won't even accept won't even accept and won't even receive a message that teaches them to repent from their sin People wonder why they're sick all the time wonder why when they get prayed for nothing happens It's because their heart is filled with junk in the trunk Another problem we have in America and the deliverance problem that people don't get delivered because of apathy They really just don't care about it they really want somebody else to do the work and then reap the benefits. But I'm telling you, if you're going to be free, you're going to fight to be free. If you're going to wake up like I've woke up in the last three years, you're going to fight to wake up. If you want to get up from the ground where the devil's been stomping you on, you're going to have to put on your war clothes. You're going to have to find your war cry. You're going to have to bury your face in this book and get your face out of Facebook. You're going to have to put your feet on the solid rock and say, this is my house. And you'll get out of my house in the name of Jesus. You'll proclaim like Joshua, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. You, you serve the Philistines God. You serve the Egyptian gods if you want to. But my house is going back to church and falling back in love with God Jesus will do these things but you can't be apathetic about it 
You can't pray some two-minute wimpy prayer and think everything is going to now fall into place in your life. Honey, if you're really looking for an answer, you will search diligently until you find it. And when you find it, you will rejoice and you will call your friends and you will say, this son of mine was lost, but now he's found. My husband or daughter, my wife was lost, but now they are found. What does that? The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. You have not because you ask not. But when you ask, you ask amiss that you may heap it upon your own lust. My God, don't answer those kind of prayers. But if you are sincere, if you are hungry, if you are thirsty, God's got a table. God's got a table. Hey, hallelujah, Sunday, come outside. God's got a table spread for the righteous. And the Bible in the Psalms 23 says, uh, He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You, we, this country, this church, this state needs deliverance. If you don't believe is deliverance is necessary, you don't believe bondage is real. If you don't believe deliverance is necessary, you don't believe bondage is real. <laughs> and I'll tell you what else. You don't believe Jesus lie. Excuse me. Jesus told the truth. You believe he's a liar because he preached about deliverance and he delivered many from their sickness, from death, from disease, from starvation, from demons. He delivered all the way across the board. You don't believe in his gospel message. You don't believe that his death was for you because you don't need it. You don't need deliverance. No, we all need deliverance. Yeah, I'm first in line. We all need deliverance. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Jesus describing his own ministry. Y'all got a minute? Y'all got a minute? Y'all got just a few more minutes? I, I know I'm taking long. I got somewhere to go. I'm, a, I'm trying to get my wheels down to land, but it's hard to get these things to come out. Luke 4, 18 says, the Spirit of the Lord. This is Jesus talking about his own ministry. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Oh, Hallelujah. To preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, To proclaim liberty to the captives. And recovery of sight to the blind. My friend, this world is full of blind people. And they got 20-20 vision. Amen. They got to wake up to see what I'm preaching. Some of them can't even see what I'm preaching. They're so blinded to it. Alright. Now what? there's two things he talks about. He mentions liberty twice. What does it say in this version? Deliverance. I like that word. Deliverance and uh, liberty. Same thing. To proclaim liberty to the captives. Deliverance to the captives. And the recovery of sight to the blind. And liberty to those who are oppressed. I want you to notice there's two times he talks about liberty. Two times he talks about deliverance. One is for the captives. Now you want a captive is somebody that was taken as a prisoner of war in most cases. Or captive in one country to be taken to be a slave in another country. That's a captive. So we come to set the captives free. Once I was held by sin, but I am held no longer. That's a captivity. I was in the captivity of sin, but he didn't stop there to bring at liberty those who are oppressed. Now, oppression is not necessarily a physical type of captivity. It is, listen, it's an infiltration of the enemy into your mind and into your heart to oppress you. Somebody says, oh, it doesn't talk about God setting you free from, from demonics uh, in your own life. Oh, yeah, that's what, what do you think comes to oppress you? I don't get up in the morning oppressing myself. If I do, I am sick. Something is wrong with me. I get up to get my cup of coffee, so I'll feel what, but waking up. Amen. Feel better. Wake up. Liberty. Jesus is bringing liberty to those who are oppressed by the enemy. Those who are oppressed by the devil. He wants you to be free. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. You have to pull that one up for me. Hallelujah. 12 and 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed. The word there is metamorphosis. By the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Let me talk just a little while longer, if you will. Because I've just really got to the place where I want you to understand why I told you everything negative about everything in the beginning. Because that's not where the story ends. That's, what, that's your wake-up call. That's your wake-up call. That's your coffee right there. Wake up. Once you get wake up, then you began to transform. You began to change. You began to metamorphose. 
The definition, I wrote this one. I just want to share one with you. You can look it up for yourself. Metamorphosis. I wrote this down. It says a change from the form or nature of a thing or person to a completely different one by natural or supernatural means. That's the definition, right? Right off of my phone. <laughs> Metamorphosis. A change of the form or nature of a thing or person. Oh, even the dictionary says you can change. <laughs> they ain't talking about the blood. They're talking about the word metamorphosis. Hey, meta. Something that's real, physical. Something that you are and I am. A person or a thing can change. The devil's a liar. I'm not stuck in the rut. I'm free by the blood of Jesus Christ. All right. Form or nature of a thing or person to a completely different by na natural or supernatural means. In other words, the force that will change you could be a natural force. It could be a supernatural force. In this case, we're talking about the blood of Jesus. And let me tell you, there is a, there, it also leans towards it be an irreversible change. In other words, when the, when the caterpillar. Let me talk about the monarch butterfly. Anybody know anything about the monarch butterfly? That's the best butterfly in the world. The monarch butterfly has one of, it is the most celebrated, documented, wonderful migration in the insect world. They, they come all the way from, from Mexico, southern parts of, of, uh, of California, where they spend the winter. And it takes them four generations and they go all the way up to Canada. And they'll only lay their eggs on one kind of plant. You know what the plant's called? Milkweed. They, the, the mamas lay the, the eggs and it takes them all summer, spring and summer to go all the way from, the, from southern Mexico all the way. All summer long, they work their way up, laying eggs, hatching, living, laying eggs, hatching, living. By the time they get up to California, they've laid all their babies on milkweed. Milkweed has got poison in it. And the caterpillar, when it, when it comes out of the, uh, of the egg shape, comes into the larva of the pupal state, it begins to eat something that the birds don't like. It's milkweed. Let me tell you, you wonder why the world hates you. The closer you get to God and the more the word you get in you, the more of the word, the milk and the meat of God, the more they're going to talk about you, the more they're going to blaspheme you, the more they're going to ridicule you, the more if you're in deliverance, they're going to talk about how demonized you are. Why? Because you got something that they don't like to taste. You suck in the milk and the meat of the word. Listen, and the bird, let me tell you this, the birds don't like them, the lizards don't like them, and if they eat them, there's only certain birds that can eat them. If they eat them, it'll kill them. Most of the time they eat one and they vomit it back up. And they learn the lesson. Don't mess with the monarch butterfly. Hey, when, it's, when it's bright orange. When it's got black stripes. And when it's got white dots. Don't eat that one. That one will tear you up. Oh, I'm telling you. When you get where you're supposed to be in God. The world can't touch this. They didn't make it. And they can't take it. But glory to God. Hallelujah. We got something that does something good for us. Sucking on that milkweed. But there's something amazing because they make their journey all through the, the summer. And right at the end of summer, that fourth generation, the, the, their families have covered all that distance, ends up way up north. Both, and it's on both coasts, east and west coast. Monarchs, butterfly on both coasts. It goes all the way up north. But the last generation, remember I talked about we are the end of the end game. We're the last, the last generation. You got to get this. In their lifetime, flies all the way back down to Mexico. And they winter. It takes four generations to get to the top. It takes one generation to get back home. They, they travel all the way in one generation and they roost over the winter and they can't make it all the way back to the top. But they make it back far, farther enough. They start the journey back and they lay their eggs somewhere a little bit north of where they started. And in four generations, the whole thing will do it again. If you're the last generation, let me tell you, there's a supernatural strength 
They can't explain it. There's no reason why they should live longer. There's no reason why they should be able to fly further. There's no reason they should be able to winter a span of time that their forefathers never even lived that many days. There's no reason except God made it that way. I'm telling you, if we are the last generation, and the Bible says on that last generation, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and sons and daughters shall prophesy. Oh, men, they're not through yet. They shall dream dreams. Young men. They're going to get started young with visions. What am I saying? If we are the last generation, we can combat this evil that is infesting our world. We're not only going to tear it down. We're going to fly all the way home. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Yes, it may be bad. And yes, every bird out there would like to eat us. But I'm telling you, as long as you're sucking on the meat and the milk of God's word, you are okay. And as long as you've got your eyes set on home, you're okay. You're going to make the journey. It is long, but God has ordained the last generation to be the best generation. All right, calm down. You're going to make me preach my voice out. All we need is Jesus. Let me, let me land a plane. I got a few more points. <laughs> let me just mention the honeybee. Just kind of mention the honey. The honeybee, confined in an octangular paper like tube, larvae, grows and grows, wants to be free. It starts out as a tiny little ugly worm. You know, looks kind of white. Y'all seen them, larvae. Some of y'all fished with them before. Rob Yellowjacket nest. We used to do that when I was a kid. That honeybee finally gets its liberty. And instead of being earthbound, and same thing with the caterpillar. The caterpillar's earthbound. It's eating the grass. It's eating the milkweed. It's longing for the day something's going to change. It's going to metamorphose. And then that, that thing, that, that caterpillar has to go tie himself up to a branch silk he has to close himself in and then a cocoon will form around him a cocoon forms around him but he doesn't come out of that thing like he went in he metamorphoses while there that that honeybee larva metamorphoses while it's there it, it's not an egg anymore it, it's it's a bee it comes out and when it spreads its wings and its wings dries it begins to go not listen it's sucking the nectar out of the flowers just like the butterfly the butterfly used to eat milkweed now it's drinking nectar Oh, glory to God. When you transition from the natural into the supernatural, you'll get what I'm talking about. Amen. You know what Jesus meant when he was so hungry that disciples went to get him some bread. And by the time he got back, he wasn't hungry anymore. He said, I got bread to eat that you know not of. He was talking about a heavenly manna. When, when you get your wings, when you stop eating like the caterpillar, it's okay to be a caterpillar for a little while. But when you get your wings and you can ride on the wind of the spirit and you got a high that you can't get to as long as you had them multiple legs sticking you to something on the ground. I'm telling you, there's a transition. There, there's this metamorphosis that needs to take place. But here's another point I want to make for you. I'm trying to hurry now. That don't mean anything. I just keep preaching, don't I? Until you change your position. Write it down. Until you change your position, you cannot change your condition. Until you change your position. Because we've been operating in the flesh so long and nothing's happened. And until we change the position of operating in the flesh to operating in the spirit, our condition is never going to change. You see, you got to move from depending on the carnal abilities. You know, you got talents, you can sing, the pastor wants you to sing. You got talents, you can play, the pastor wants you to play. You got talent to do this, so, so you're using your talent. But the talent doesn't mean you're anointed. The talent doesn't mean that God's approving everything you're saying. And God's approving everything he just gave you, the talent, and you're doing it. All right? And so when you want to get what God has that is the best for your life, you can't get it until you change your position to working out of the flesh. And you go over to the position of working out of the spirit. For they that walk in the spirit. They live. But to be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life. And it is peace. 
So you have to change your position before you change your condition. Yeah, you can go see the doctor because of your position in the flesh. Oh, doctor, I'm having severe headaches. And the doctor gives you some medication. And next week you feel better. But in a year or so, the medication doesn't work. Your position in the flesh is still the same. You're leaning on the arm of flesh. And I'm not against doctors. I'm just using this as an illustration. So you go back to the doctor. He prescribes another pill. But let me tell you. Let me tell you this. If you would change your position. From going to the natural man to help the natural being. Then you can go to the spiritual man who created you in his image. He knows what's wrong with you. He's a power. He's a stripes bore on his back for your healing. You can't change your position until you change. Listen, the condition that you're under. You're leaning on man. You got to lean on God. You got to lean on God. Change your position from trusting in the flesh to trusting in God. Then you can break off the heavy yoke. Then you can take the yoke of easy. His yoke is Jesus. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. When you lean on the arm of flesh, you'll only trade one problem for another. All right. I'm trying to go. Let me talk for Abraham just a minute. I'm going to conclude this, this sermon for you. In Genesis chapter 21, this is what we find out. We find out that Abraham, though he was a man of faith and the father of faith, he made some mistakes along the way. And one of the things God had promised him that he would have a son and he began to operate in the flesh. And he began to say, you know what, maybe, maybe I could have, Sarah said, maybe honey, we can have a son through Hagar, our Egyptian handmaid. All right, now Hagar came out of Egypt when, a, when, a, when Abraham and, and Sarah had went to Egypt during a famine. And when they came out, Hagar came out with them. And Hagar is said by most historians was one of Pharaoh's daughters or granddaughters. When she saw the, that Sarah, remember Sarah was taken into Pharaoh's harem because Abraham said she's my sister. But she was beautiful. And we know the story about how Pharaoh, you know, questioned Abraham, something's wrong here. And Abraham said, yeah, that's my wife for real, you know, well. Hagar had really fell in love with Sarah because of her attribute for one God. Her love and devotion to one God, even having no children. So she left with them. So it came to pass that after Abraham had had a promise from God that had not come to pass in several years, that Abraham and Sarah got together and said, maybe I could use Hagar and she could bear a son for you. Be a surrogate mother for you. And, we would. and that was Abraham's flesh. And from Abraham's fleshly idea came Ishmael. And Ishmael was a mess. He was a troublemaker. He was a troublemaker all his life. And the Bible prophesied that every man's hand would be against him and his hand would be against every man. Please stay with me just a minute. I got to get you somewhere. I'm, I'm finishing it up. So that was Abraham's effort in the flesh to do what God promised him was going to happen. And it didn't work. It, it was too much trouble. But then Abraham's faith brought Isaac. God said to Abraham, I rejected him. I will not use your son Ishmael, but I will send you a son. And when God prophesied and told him that, Sarah's in the tent laughing. The angel says, why is your wife laughing? Don't she believe? Well, she did believe, but it was hard to believe. Abraham's faith produced Isaac. His name is laughter. And then you go to Genesis chapter 25. And in Genesis 25, you see that Isaac... Married, a, married his, his uh, cousin. And listen, his, his cousin, uh, Rachel, Rebecca or Rachel? Rachel, I forgot. I get Rachel and Rebecca. I get them straightened out. His, his wife couldn't have children. Couldn't have children. So he pleaded with God. You got to get that. That's in Genesis 25 to 21. Isaac pleaded with God. And, and then she brought forth. She conceived. God heeded what Isaac was praying about. And she had Esau and Jacob. Esau came out hairy, hungry, and angry. <laughs> he, wasn't that, he wasn't that good of a fella either. Jacob didn't come out much better. He grabbed his brother heel. And they called him a heel grabber. That's what Jacob means. And, and that also means a worm, a supplanter. Somebody that digs under the earth to uproot something else. He was a worm. He was a supplanter. But when they separated because Esau was going to kill his brother Jacob. Jacob on his way back home. Years, years later after he had a family and riches and honor. He, he coming back home and he's going, to, he's going to meet Esau. And he wrestled with an angel. The Bible says it was a man. Many people believe it was a pre-incarnation of Jesus Christ. And would not let this man go, this angel go until he was blessed. And the angel said, the blessing will be, you'll no longer be called Jacob, which means a, a worm. But you will be called Israel, which is a prince with God. You wrestle with God, you have prevailed. You'll be called the prince of God. Now Jacob, whose name was Israel, 
had a favorite son named Joseph. And Joseph, listen, his brothers didn't like him because he was his dad's favorite. And when, one day when he had went to see his brothers, they saw a band of Ishmaelites. And they said, first of all, let us kill our brother, Joseph. But then they said, no, let's sell him to the Ishmaelites. All right, listen, Ishmaelites were the descendants of Ishmael. They were the descendants of Ishmael. And there was a caravan going to Egypt. You know, sometimes apples don't fall from the tree. Why were the Ishmaelites going back to Egypt? Because the Ishmaelites' mama was Hagar. Hagar was a princess in Egypt. So they're going to do some trade and make some money from grandpa's house. Yeah, you never put that together. They're going to grandpa's house and here they are. They're going to get to take as a slave their cousin. The favored son. The favorite son of Abraham's favorite son, Isaac. You better believe we'll take him. You better believe we'll take him in the bondage. We'll sell him to our people and they'll teach him what it's like to be a slave and be an outcast. I'm going somewhere now. I'm fixing to land the boat. Fixing to sail it right on in the harbor. Now, they did take him. They did sell him. And Joseph was a slave for, for several years and then a prisoner for several years. But there came a day when the prince that Joseph's father was, that was the spirit of his father. His father was transformed by the angel. His father was a prince with God. That spirit of a prince was in his favored son. And his favorite son might be in prison, but there's another spirit in that prison inside of Joseph's body, inside of Joseph's mind. He knew his father loved him. He knew that he had a God who was a true and living God. And so what happens is Joseph moves from being in the prison to being the prince of Egypt. He is sacking in command under Pharaoh. Now let me paint this whole picture over for you again. As long as you like Abraham trying to work in the flesh, it's going to be a failure. And let me tell you, we've all got our Ishmael's. We've all got Ishmael's in our life. Things we've done in the flesh when we're working in the carnal man and the carnal nature doing the carnal thing. We've all made our mistakes. Amen. We've all made our mistakes. We've all repented of our mistakes. We've all got it right with God. And the next thing you know, God's bringing good things. God's bringing Isaac. God's bringing laughter. God's bringing peace. And God's bringing joy into our life. Amen. Amen. Then our offspring. Our offspring may be like Isaac. Good. Or they may be the grandson like Isaac. Isaac and Jake, or excuse me, like Esau and Jacob, and they may have their troubles, but I'm telling you, when you are birthed from faith, there's a difference from being birthed from faith and birthed from flesh. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Let me tell you, if you are born again, you are born of the spirit. You have had a metamorphosis in your life. You're not the worm you used to be. You're not the Jacob that lied to his brother, lied to his daddy, lied to, to, to Laban, his uncle. He, you're not the worm anymore. You've metamorphosed and now you are changed. You are a prince with God. You passion and power has come from God there's been a transition in your life and even though the devil might come and take your son and your daughter down to the prison of Egypt and try to rake them over the coals I'm telling you there's a seed of faith oh for God knows those that are his moms and dads here's news for you you keep holding on the seed is a seed of promise and the promise will come to pass because the one who promised is faithful and true and just. Hallelujah. Yeah. Whoa. I tell you what. Our children might be in the prison tonight. But they can be in the palace tomorrow. Because God has placed in them a seed of righteousness. A seed of a prince. The hope of Jesus. So we start out in a mess. We end up in a miracle. Yeah, Jesus. He's a deliverer. He delivered Joseph from the prison. He delivered Daniel from, from the lion's den. Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the fiery furnace. Come on, it just keeps rolling. There's, he, he delivered David from Goliath's hand. Oh, come on. Now, there's, there's more to be said. He, he, delivered, he, he delivered Jeremiah from the deep pit. 
He, he delivered David from the sin with Bathsheba. He, he delivers. He delivers. He delivers. He delivers those that have stumbled. He delivers those that have failed. He delivered those that have disappointed everybody. And he raises them up from the ashes of their failure. And he brings them to the palace of the king. And he makes them his sons. And he makes them his daughters. And they are metamorphosed by the power and the blood and the name of Jesus Christ. And they go through a change that they cannot ever return from. Yeah, you may leave, God. Yeah, you can turn your back this very day and say, I'll serve you no longer. But you'll never forget the good days you had when you were in the presence of your father, the king. One day, the prodigal son woke up and said, I will go to my father's house. Won't you stand with me tonight? Oh, Jesus, I, I got to get the thing on the ground. Hallelujah. He's a deliverer. He's a deliverer. Glory to God. The way out is in the spirit. You're not getting out in the flesh. You don't get out in the flesh. Flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You don't get out in the flesh. You can't figure it out in the flesh. You can't pay your way out in the flesh. You can't beg, borrow, and break yourself out of the flesh. You got to get out of this thing, this mess we're in, this being demonized, this, this, this lies that we've accepted, this compromises. We, we've got to get out of them by getting in the spirit. When you get in the spirit, you will get out of the flesh. When you get out of the flesh and crucify the flesh with its lust and passions and evil desires, when you get out of the flesh, a door of opportunity will begin to open up in your life. And you'll be able to walk in the spirit. Then you'll be able to sing in the spirit. And then you'll be able to operate in the spirit. And then the things of this world won't hold you down. You'll be able to soar on the wings of the spirit. You won't be the egg anymore. You'll be the eagle that comes out of the egg. You won't be the chicken scratching in the, in the farmer's yard. You'll be soaring on the wings of an eagle. You you shall run and not be weary. You shall walk and not faint. You'll be on the anointing. You won't rise on your own merit. You won't rise on your own ingenuity. You won't rise on your own ability. You will rise on the winds of the spirit of the living God. For it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. You can't get out of the mess we're in in America unless we have revival. Oh, we're not going to have a revival unless we clean the house of God. We ain't going to clean the house of God until we get sincere and and humble ourselves and pray and turn from our wicked ways and then our God he will hear from heaven he will forgive our sin he will heal our lands and don't think the world's going to lead the way the church is going to lead the way don't wait for the flesh to stand up and elect somebody that's going to get you out of the mess let Jesus arise let Jesus arise in the house of God and we will see a new nation Hey, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let's repent. Let's repent. We've let it in. We've got to move the trash out. God ain't going to bless it like it is. You've got to sanctify it. You've got to get it out. Yeah, Jesus. Come on, pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, let's pray. Forgive me. Forgive me, God. I open doors to iniquity. I've opened doors to demonic, demonic infestation in my marriage. I've opened doors of demonic infestation in my children. My God, forgive me. I have sinned and fallen short of the glory. My God, take your blood and wash me clean. Forgive me of my sins and trespasses. Oh God, I shut every door from every generation. God, right now, I stop the generational flow of iniquity into my family. In my AA, in the name of Jesus, I stop it. By the blood of the cross of Jesus Christ, I stop the generational iniquity right now. I confess our sins and I forsake our sin. I renounce our sin and our family. God, it's been carried on. Some of it may be trying to carry itself through me. But in the name of Jesus, I cancel out this assignment of the demons enforcing the curses against me in the name of Jesus I rise up and say not in my not in my house not in my lifetime not in my marriage and not with my children in the name of Jesus I break it in the name of Jesus I come against all demonic spirits that infest my house and I command you to get out get out in the name of Jesus I sever every tie I sever every tie that I've opened the portal and let you in through in the name of Jesus you won't get my time anymore you won't get my mind anymore i'm confessing and forsaking all the things i've lent to your kingdom yeah jesus yeah jesus yeah you you want to be free you better act like you know you got some bondage 
You're not going to get free until you see all the things that Satan chains have been hanging, rattling on you all this time. Yeah, you need freedom. Oh, he set me free. He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound, my Jesus, to see. Because glory to God, he set me free. If you're not free today, you need him. You need to be free. You need to be delivered. If you need to be delivered, won't you come right here? Stand across the front of this aisle. Let us pray for you in the name of Jesus. Let us just touch you and you believe. I say, let us just touch you and you believe. In Jesus' name, that every curse will be broken. Every iniquity will be bound and cast down and destroyed. This night we come to clean our house to clean our soul to clean our mind in the name of Jesus come on now oh you can keep your pride you can keep your dignity or you can come up here and find your liberty I think liberty is the best choice for you tonight. Don't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. You came bound, tormented, sick, or lame. The Holy Ghost and Holy Power from God is still the same. Don't leave here like that way. Come on. Let us pray for you. Ministers, you come on. Deliverance teams, won't you come on? Gather behind these. Gather behind them. You, you've been doing deliverance. Come on. Gather behind these standing up right here. You know how to pray. You know how to pray. Get up here. Help us pray. All of you, you've been in deliverance ministry. Get up here behind them. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to practice what the sermon's all about tonight. And that's bringing freedom to those who are held in captivity in the name of Jesus. Oh, let this be where I die. Yeah. Oh, deliverance is a group thing. You hear me? Deliverance is a church thing. Oh, some of you sitting down will come up and gather around behind you. Help us pray. Come on, you where you're supposed to be with God. Help us pray. Once and for all. In the name of Jesus. That's right, gather behind them. Come on, come on. Be it's time to do some work for God. High, my kingdom's fall. Once and for all. Once and for all. Help me to lay it down. Oh Lord, I lay it down. Help me to lay it down. Oh Lord, I lay it down. Oh, let this be where I die. My Lord with thee crucified be lifted high as my kingdom's fall once and for all once and for all once and for all, once and for all, oh, let this be where I die, my Lord with thee, crucified. Be lifted high as my kingdom's fall once and for all, once and for all, once and for all, once and for all. Oh, let this be. Where I die, my 
In the name of Jesus, Halalamosite, glory. Somebody needs to sing, honey. Let's sing. Let's Deliverance sing. in the blood of Jesus. Deliverance in the blood of Jesus. Deliverance in the blood of Jesus, and it washes white as snow. Oh, the blood of Jesus! Oh, the blood of Jesus! Oh, the blood of Jesus, and it washes white as snow. There's healing in the blood of Jesus. There's healing in the blood of Jesus. There's healing in the blood 
of Jesus and did wash his white as snow deliverance in the blood of Jesus deliverance in the blood of Jesus deliverance in the blood of Jesus and did wash as white as snow oh, there's power in the blood of Jesus there's power in the blood of Jesus there's power in the blood of Jesus and did wash as white as snow oh the blood of Jesus oh the blood of Jesus oh the blood of Jesus and did wash as white as snow deliverance in the blood of Jesus deliverance in the blood of Jesus deliverance in the blood of Jesus and did wash as white as snow oh the blood of Jesus oh the blood of Jesus oh the blood of Jesus and did wash as white as snow
Sinte de la Rabane Ki. Sala la Rosante de Ribola Basante de la in the name of Jesus every name bows every demon bows in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of
Baby 
God. Hello, there I am. Thank you, guys. Did a good job in the sound booth tonight. Music was great. Amen. Kept me live and on the air. Thank you, Jesus. Now, God breaks bondage. He breaks oppression. He, he's a deliverer. He breaks the chains of captivity. He, he breaks the chain of oppression. You got to cooperate with his plan. You got to cooperate by walking in the spirit. As long as you're walking in the flesh, you're not cooperating. But when you walk in the spirit, all things are possible. I done preached all that, hadn't I? Staying with me, if you will. I know a lot of people had to go. That's fine. But I thank you for staying. Thank you for staying tonight. Amen. If you want to see a revival, you're going to have to learn to tarry in the upper room. You want to be filled with power, you're going to have to learn to fast and pray. You're going to have to pray in tongues. Amen. We, we've had enough Christians playing, playing long enough, looking for miracles. I'm telling you, today is a day. If we get serious with God, things are going to change because we're the last generation. Amen. Glory to God. You know, I want to thank Brother RPI. Where did he go? That's my brother. He had my back tonight. I asked him to be an armor bearer for me. Did you see? Did you see? This is a man of God right here. I simply asked him if he would follow me and help me. Okay, I'll get Joel Smith. And uh, ask him to follow me. And you say he took care of me, didn't he? Huh? That's the way it should be in the kingdom. Somebody, in the, I, had, I needed somebody on my, from my back tonight. And I asked him, you need somebody. Jesus sent them out two by two. Amen. You need a good church. Amen. Listen, thank you for coming. Thank you for enduring my loud preaching and, and, and harsh ways. Uh, God bless you. Thank you so much. Get a Lord hand for Pastor Steve Hall. Awesome word. Awesome word. Y'all been enjoying yourself? We ain't finished yet. We got uh, tomorrow. I want you to come back. Uh, we got um, uh, Augustus Washington. He'll be here tomorrow night. He's another part of our uh, WUCC family. And uh, my name is uh, Gerald, Gerald Farmer. They call me JFK. I'm on the uh, It's Really Supernatural program. It usually airs on uh, 7 p.m. on Fridays. So you probably heard my voice there. But, but anyway, I've been enjoying myself here. And um, it's, it's good to be charged up. Come to a cap meeting and hear the word of the Lord. You know, just come out every night and get built up because I, it's, it's, you know, it's plateauing, you know. So I, I thank God for allowing us to, to be able to do this. And we ask you to continue to listen to us on WUCC 99.9 .9 and continue to support us with your, you know, with your funds, with your listening ear, with your prayers. And we just thank you for coming out this evening. All lines clear. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and close in prayer. Father, we just thank you for this evening, Lord. We thank you for, once again, meeting us here and giving us your word, Lord God. We look forward to what, all, what else you have in store for us, Lord. And we, we thank you for those who are faithful and continue to support us. And we thank you for what you're doing in our lives, Lord God. The word was great tonight. And we just thank you, Lord God, for meeting us here. And Lord, we ask that you protect them. Protect those that are here as they travel to and fro. Lead us and guide us by your spirit, Lord. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Who, oh Lord, could save themselves? Their own soul could heal. Our shame was deeper than the sea. Your grace is deep still.